Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I want to share with you 14 machine shop tips and tricks that I think are worthwhile. For those of you like me who may have learned a lot of what you know about machining from reading books or online or YouTube, we don't always have the benefit of working in machine shops in the real world where you really learn some of the inside stuff. So um, some of these may be repetitive, hopefully you'll learn something from them, but let's bang through them pretty quick either way. First tip. Every two months, I go through every toolbox and drawer I own. It takes me about a half an hour. I open up every drawer, every cubby hole, every bin. And you know why? It makes me remember things I've bought, what I have on hand, what I may need. And it just helps keep me fresh. It helps you from buying duplicates of stuff and it keeps you from staying fresh on, hey, what do I have and what do I have on hand? Because it's not worth anything to you if you own something if you don't know where it is or if you've even got it. Tip number two, also every two months, and you can choose whatever interval you want. I have a set time on a set date where I spend two hours cleaning the shop. No exceptions. Seriously, no exceptions. If I'm on the phone, I tell the person, sorry, I got to run, unless it's an extreme example. But um, the shop gets clean. Why? I wish I ran a cleaner shop than I do on a daily basis. So doing this helps me just focus. And you would be amazed if you do nothing else. Don't check your email. You know, Put your phone away. Clean for two hours. Huge results. Tip number three, I keep duplicates of certain tools that are important to me in the office, in the shop. These tools are never, ever touched or used only in the case of an emergency, meaning I've broken the ones that are on the floor. If you're a welder, this may be, or a plasma guy, this may be types of consumables. It may be bandsaw blade. For me, it's usually end mills and drill bits. I need to know that I can finish jobs without having to place an emergency rush order or over the weekend or at night or whatever. It's worth it to me and it saved my butt a number of times. If you use one of those tools, it is immediately returned to the office. There is no excuse. It is brought out of the office, put into a chuck or collar or whatever, and then taken back. If it's a consumable, like a bandsaw blade or a plasma tip, before I use it, I order its replacement. No exceptions. Tip number four. I'm not 100% sure that this is absolute foolproof, certainly for every machine, but regardless, you wanna help yourself improve tool run out and, and alignment and so forth. Make a little mark on your spindle and put your collets uh, or tool holders in the same way every single time. Tip number five. In Mach 3, it's quite easy to find the center across a part. Go to one edge, find the edge, hit zero. Go to the other edge, find zero with your touch-off tool or laser or Heimer digital probe, come up and hit divide by two. That will now move you to the center of your part. Tip number six, ER collets or any type of collet, you would think that they would be accurate. They're known to have a lot less run out than other types of end mill holders. Ends up they're not perfect either. The quality matters, keep them clean, don't assume that they're perfect, especially if you're running really small end mills, really anything other one eighth of an inch, two, three, four, five thousandths of run out can really affect the chip load per tooth and, and really reduce tool life and, and degrade the cut quality. Tip number seven, Heimer's digital probes and, and the other types of probes, um, you're gonna laugh, I thought they came out of the box ready to use. Ends up you've gotta actually indicate them in with the three little set screws on the bottom here. So don't uh, buy a really expensive, really cool, really useful tool and not use it correctly. That bit me for a while once. Tip number eight, Scotch-Brite wheels. Buy one, they are the best thing. Uh, something I learned recently, they have a direction to them. I didn't know that. If you run them the other way, they will tear themselves apart like a toilet paper roll much, much more quickly. You want these things to last, they aren't cheap. Uh, links for that, the Scotch-Brite wheel and all this stuff that has a link to it, will be uh, in the video description and on the NYC CNC webpage for this video. Use pegboard. I love pegboard. You can buy it cheap in the sort of fiberboard or pressed wood format from Home Depot. You can go fancy with custom metal, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. I love pegboard. To me, it's a great way to stay organized and I use these screw down type pegboard holders that you, again, link uh, in the description to keep my tools secure. Nothing worse than trying to take a tool off the pegboard and having the damn pegboard clip fall out with it. That's a good segue to real estate. Talked about this before. The real estate around my desk, which I'm sitting in front of right now, it is ground zero. It is very important to me. I don't mean to sound, um, I don't mean for this to come off the wrong way, but it is very important for me. I want everything 
close to me. It's very important. Nothing stays within arm's reach that's not important or not used frequently. So I've got, whether it's my label printer, computer printer, certain types of tools, trash can, paper towel holders, it may be different for you. As you can see in a pan shot here, I'm actually not fully set up yet in the Ohio shop. I had this down pretty darn good in New York. I've got some work left to do, but it's everything from wire and wire cutters to tools uh, and so forth. You get the idea. Tip number 10, buy one of these temperature probes, link below. It is the best 30 bucks you'll ever spend. Things I use it for, diagnosing problems by looking to see if something's running hotter than it should be, testing powder coat temperatures when I powder coat, doing pre and post heating for welding. You can quickly just zap it and see where the temperature's at. Safety, if you are concerned if something's too hot, hit it with a gun and then you know. Uh, and then silly, but even looking for leaks around the shop or in the building to see where cold spots are. Seriously, buy one of these things. Tip number 11, so you also need to go buy an RPM gauge. Very inexpensive, super useful, whether it's for calibrating a machine or for testing a motor or when I do Arduino work, knowing, hey, am I in the right ballpark? It's cheap, it's worth having on hand for a variety of reasons. Link below, special shout out, thank you to Brad over at Tactical Keychain for mentioning that you wanted to keep the batteries out of these things uh, or it'll suck down a nine volt while it's sitting on your shelf in a few weeks. Tip number 13, Use soft jaws. I don't care whether you're a manual machinist or a CNC machinist. Soft jaws are great. There's a link below for a video I did on using them. They are awesome and they are inexpensive. And last tip 14, if you do use soft jaws or even if you don't, be smart. I love having a impact gun. This is a DeWalt 18 volt ready with a ball tipped hex head. I can pull the socket head cap screws in and out for vice jaws so fast. Uh, it's not worth your time or my time to be sitting there fumbling around with an L-shaped Allen key trying to get these in and out. So, hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. Hopefully you've learned something. I'll, in another three or four months, if I've got a, enough tips that I think it's worthy of your time for, to put a video out, I will. If you guys have additional tips, I'd love to see them in the comments below here. If you're new to the channel, this is what I do. I love publishing videos on CNC manufacturing, machining at home, Arduinos and prototyping and so forth. I do a series called the Wednesday Widget, which publishes every Wednesday. And then I also do project and bigger type videos. If you're interested in manufacturing, machining, prototyping, etc., I would appreciate if you uh, would subscribe. Otherwise, folks, I will see you this Wednesday for the Wednesday Widget. It's on something a little bit different. I uh, hope you guys will enjoy. Uh, but uh, as always, I do appreciate the comments, the likes, the thumbs up, the shares. And I'll see you soon. Take care, folks.